Okay, um, hopefully the stream is live. Uh, howdy, uh, my name is Zachary Patton, but I often go by ZP. Uh, I'm from Kansas in the United States. Uh, I've been coding C Sharp since 2010, uh, and I've been prof working professionally as a software developer since 2014. Uh, I've been a member of the C Sharp Discord uh, since uh, March of 2019. Uh, I'm usually fairly active on the help channels. Uh, the topic of this presentation is uh, the .NET console games repository on GitHub, uh, and I'm hoping this will last under 30 minutes. Um, I do have a script down at the bottom. I didn't prepare slides because I want this to be more of a hands-on uh, uh, demo, um, but if I look down awkwardly, I'm looking at my script. Um, so uh, you guys should see right now uh, the actual repository itself, uh, the web page on GitHub. Um, and I do want to mention that uh, uh, my profile has my link to my uh, social media. If anyone has any questions or whatnot, there will be a Q&A session at the end, um, or at least hopefully we have time for that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, here's the repository that I'm going to be talking about. Um, and I'll uh, kind of scroll down a little bit. Um, uh, so as the name suggests, uh, it's a collection of console games uh, implemented in C Sharp. Um, they're organized by weight. So I've got a little weight here. Um, the idea being that uh, if you're if you're going to implement one of these, code it yourself from scratch, uh, you probably want to start with uh, the lower weight ones. Um, uh, each game has its own readme. If you click on uh, the name of the game, uh, it'll take you to a readme for it. Uh, each game also has a, uh, a build status and a play now button. Uh, of course, this is all uh, on GitHub, all open source. Uh, let me go ahead and click on one of the play now buttons to show you what that does, because uh, you can actually play the games online. Um, so let's start with Whack-A-Mole. So I'm going to click the play now button on Whack-A-Mole. And it's taken me to a web page. Um, and so I can actually play the console game in the web page. Now, one note I want to mention is that you do, uh, if you want to have keyboard input, you do have to click uh, with your mouse inside of the console window here on the web page. If I click outside of it, then you'll, you may lose keyboard support. So click inside, and then from there, you'll be able to use the keyboard. Um, so I'm gonna hit enter uh, for the screen here. And there we go, now I'm playing the game. So uh, you try to, <laughs> for whack-a-mole, uh, you try to whack the moles. Um, in this case, this is the Java noob edition of whack-a-mole. So we're whacking some Java noobs. Um, and I'm just pressing the corresponding uh, button on my keyboard. Um, and let's see what score I get. It only lasts 30 seconds. Okay, and I got a score of 20. Um, so hopefully those uh, those Java noobs learn their lesson and start using C Sharp. Um, now, the web versions of these games um, are implemented with uh, Blazor WebAssembly, uh, and it's hosted for free on GitHub Pages. Uh, if you're not familiar with GitHub Pages, I would highly recommend you give it a look. Uh, it lets you host static websites for free. So it's a great place if you want to make a portfolio um, or, or any kind of website that's that's static. Uh, it's, it's just a great place to do that for free. Um, so uh, now let's move on to the games. It run, let's uh, look at what it looks like in Visual Studio. So uh, I guess first let me show you uh, what the what it should look like when you when you download or clone the repo, um, the solution file and uh, the SLNF file are both right in the root of the repo. So those are the what you open. Uh, if you're new to Visual Studio, you'll open those in Visual Studio, and it will open your project. If you've opened it uh, the correct way, you should see all of the games here in their own separate project. Uh, let me go ahead and collapse that one there. Um, and then you can run the games by just right clicking and then set as startup project. Um, so uh, let's, uh, 
let's give another game a look. Uh, before I do that, I do want to mention, if, if anyone's unfamiliar with this SLNF uh, file extension, uh, this is actually a solution filter file. Um, there's a lot of C-sharp developers that don't actually know about that one. Um, it just lets you filter out, uh, so it, it lets you link to another solution, but you can filter it down to only certain ones. Uh, the reason I have that in this case is uh, uh, one of these projects is actually the website itself. That's this one down here. Um, and so uh, I have that excluded from the SLNF file. It's filtered out, um, if you're curious. Um, but yep, so uh, after you set the whatever game you want to play as the startup uh, project, then you can just click the triangle up here to start it. Let's give the drive game a look. Okay, so I set drive as the startup project. Now I'm clicking play. And that's interesting. Drive project debugger does not exist. Uh, it should exist. Do, do, do. Let me try to build it, and then let's try that again. There we go. That's a little interesting, uh, but either way, we got it running. Uh, so I'm going to click Enter, and what this game is is a driving game, and so you try to stay on the road. Now, hopefully this is coming through on the stream okay. Oh, <laughs> I already died there. Uh, but uh, it, yeah, there's a there's a scrolling uh, top to bottom scrolling road and uh, scrolling road, <laughs> and you try to stay on the track. Uh, so let me try that one more time. So you your your arrow keys set the um, um, set the uh, velocity of the vehicle, and you just go from there. And hitting up and down will. Uh, set your velocity to be perfectly vertical. And then I'll go ahead and die there uh, intentionally so we can move on. But So there's a driving game. Uh, and now I want to jump to Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to hop over to Visual Studio Code. So here's what Visual Studio Code looks like. Now, Visual Studio Code is folder driven rather than product uh, projects and solution files. So what you would do in this case is you open the root repository. So in Visual Studio, you would open the solution or the uh, uh, filter file. Um, but in Visual Studio Code, you would open the root uh, directory. So this directory here, um, you can obviously do that from uh, Visual Studio itself, or if you install Visual Studio Code, you usually have a option there in your context menu. Um, but okay, so I've got the repository open in Visual Studio Code. Now let's give another game a look. Uh, this time I want to jump to Tug of War. Um, and before I actually start it, I want to show off this drop down. Um, so, uh, just like in Visual Studio, it's it's really easy to see and run the different games. Um, so, uh, if I just go to the debug and run, there are all the games right here. I can just select which one I want to play and then hit the check mark. Uh, let me go ahead and jump into that tug of war game. I want to jump into that one next and then start. And so, what this game is. Uh, is a, uh, hopefully it's pretty uh, named appropriately, it's a, it's a tug of war game, it's a button masher. Uh, so you're trying to mash either the left and right arrow or the A and D keys um, to pull the rope. Uh, let's, uh, you get to choose a difficulty. So I'll, I'll start with easy and I'm, I'm losing. Oh no, he's pulling faster than me. So I need to start mashing my buttons. And when I start mashing, then I'm pulling it towards my side of the rope. If I let go and I stop mashing, it's going to go back towards the other side. Uh, and I'll just kind of finish this game. You just try to pull that center of the rope all the way to your side. Uh, and then there we go. We got him. And it shows you average. So I averaged uh, 5.27 mashes per second. Um, so uh, that's another game. Do 
Now, uh, in uh, Visual Studio Code, uh, I want to point out how I got these all to appear in the dropdown. Because there's there's a lot of people that uh, have been coding C Sharp, but they've been kind of sticking to Visual Studio. And Visual Studio is great, um, but uh, Visual Studio Code is becoming more and more popular. Uh, and it, it, it'd be nice if more repositories out there uh, started making uh, their their repository more Visual Studio Code friendly, um, so that way we'd be able to go ahead and open it up right away, and then and then select it and run it just like I did here. Um, so uh, I want to real quick show you how you can uh, wh what you need to do to make your your repository Visual Studio Code friendly. Um, so uh, Visual Studio Code looks for specific files that are JSON files in a .vs code folder. Um, we have, uh, uh, I, I think these are the only four files currently. They may add more in the future, and there may be some I'm not aware of. But uh, what these four files do is this first one, extensions.json. Uh, this one will prompt the user when they open uh, your repository in Visual Studio Code. It'll prompt them to install these extensions if they don't already have them. Um, so if I go to my extensions, uh, you can see I've got several extensions, but specifically this one for C Sharp, um, this one, uh, this is the one that you're going to want. So I, uh, I I have that on the recommended. So when you open this, it'll actually appear with a little, a little uh, prompt uh, down here. Now I've already got it installed, so I'm not getting the prompt. Um, but uh, you you would get a prompt there if you if you opened it. Um, so that's the extensions.json. Um, let's come back to launch.json in a second. Uh, here's another uh, uh, here's a settings file. Uh, so you can kind of clean up your uh, your tree. Um, your this so here's all the files, but I'm, I'm hiding some stuff because no one really cares about the bin directory, which is the the binary where your code is built to. Um, so I just hide that because we don't need to see that. We don't ever need to go edit that. Um, another feature that if you are new to Visual Studio Code and you're trying to use C Sharp that you'll want to enable is semantic highlighting. Um, you definitely want to set that to true. Uh, what that'll do is that will, uh, it'll, it'll enable semantic highlighting. So classes and uh, classes and structs, for example, you can have them be different colors. Uh, or, or delegates or whatever have you. Um, the, uh, it, so essentially, the different type of type that you're dealing with, you, you can assign the different colors. That's, that's what semantic highlighting is. Um, now, the task.json file is how you, uh, is what builds the code. So these are the build commands. Um, so, uh, you need to have a build command for each of your projects. You'll notice as I'm scrolling down through here, hopefully the scrolling is working OK in the stream. Uh, I've got a build command for each of the projects. Uh, and then the launch, these options here are what actually show in the drop down in the debug window. So for each option in the launch.json, there is a uh, it will uh, make an option appear here in the dropdown. Um, and so that's how you can set up your code to be uh, more easily uh, or friendly for people who open it in Visual Studio Code. Um, now, uh, all the games target .NET, um, and uh, if anyone's unfam unfamiliar with .NET, you can run them from the command line. Um, so let's look at another game. I'm going to run this one from the command line rather than Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. So it's just uh, you can run any project with the .NET run command if you're in the directory of that project. So right now I'm in the directory of the Pac-Man game, and I'm going to just type .NET run, and that should start the game. And there we go. We have a little Pac-Man. Uh, game all running in the console. So I'm going to hit an arrow key left or right to get started. And then all of a sudden, the ghosts are following me. 
it looks like the red and green ghosts may be overlapping. Um, but hopefully they'll split up soon. <laughs> there they are. Um, so yep, I'm just moving and trying to escape the ghosts. Now I'm not going to trouble you guys with <laughs> playing a full round of this. So I'm going to go say, go give that, give that ghost a kiss. Um, but, uh, apparently it doesn't like me. Um, <laughs> that's, uh, that's Pac-Man. Um, so, uh, so yeah, you can, uh, you can run, uh, games.net from the command line just fine if you that's 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 really if you don't want to uh use visual studio or visual studio code um now uh let's also jump to linux because if uh, anyone's not aware uh net is cross-platform um so you can run uh net code on linux uh, let's give that a look real quick Okay, and so what I'm on right here is uh, WSL. Uh, WSL is Windows subsystem for Linux. Um, and uh, I've also catted the OS release. So uh, you can see that this is uh, Ubuntu uh, 22.4. Um, but uh, what this, if anyone's unfamiliar with WSL, it, it's Windows subsystem, Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, it lets you run Linux from Windows. Uh, you can look it up. Uh, 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 there's a lot of information out there, um, uh, but it's really great for testing, uh, especially console apps uh, on Linux. But yep, uh, let me just run one of the games uh, here. Uh, let's do uh, let's do the draw game. And there we have the draw game. Now, uh, I should have probably changed my cursor from being a line to a something a little better. But uh, <clears throat> so as I move my arrow keys, it uh, is drawing, but it's also erasing uh, every time I move. So I'm going to hit the left arrow key now. So it filled in that spot. Now I'm going to hit the right arrow key. It also filled in that spot. Now I'm going to hit down, and it erased that spot. So if you move on to spaces that already have uh, ink on them, uh, then it'll erase it. Um, but if you move on to spaces that don't, of course, it will it'll fill it in. Um, so I'll go ahead and uh, hopefully <laughs> uh, fill this in pretty quickly. And there we go. So I duplicated the image. Now. Uh, so the point of this game was a randomly generated image on the right-hand side, and you're trying to replicate it on the left-hand side. Uh, I should have made that a little more clear. Um, but, uh, yep, so that's Draw. That's, an, again, another one of the games. Um, and uh, I'll, let me let me hit Enter, and I'll, I'll show you uh, that this is randomly generated every time. So there's, there's another one. Um, and then, do, 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 where's my home key? So if I keep hitting home, it'll randomly generate a, another little graphic each time for you to try to copy. Um, but yep, so uh, I forgot the command to clear. There it goes. Um, but yep, that's running one of the games from, from Linux. Um, so yeah, if you've never, if you've never tried to run .NET code from Linux, it's a great one. A uh, great tool to use, WSL. Uh, I do want to mention that not all of the games, uh, or not just because you uh, just because you code for .NET six doesn't mean that your game is going to be uh, game is going to be cross platform. Uh, for example, the console.beep method, um, if anyone's used console.beep, and th there's other ones as well, is Windows only. Uh, I happen to have a game beep pad. Um, I won't show that one off because it requires audio and I'm not streaming my audio. I don't want to trouble you guys with, <laughs> with that. Um, uh, but, uh, 
that, that one's Windows only because, uh, again, just because you code in .NET doesn't mean that your code actually will run on all the platforms. Uh, so just be aware of that. That, that trips people up sometimes. Um, now, I want to take a second to talk about uh, uh, what, what the purpose is of this repository. I, I, uh, what I'm kind of what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to make a, a, a hub for people to uh, see examples of console games, uh, be able to contribute uh, their console games and get attention. Um, just uh, yeah, make make a hub. Uh, there's there's a lot of console games out there on GitHub. If you just do a search, you'll you'll find it, uh, tons of them. Um, but they're all scattered into various repositories, and there there's not a lot of consistency. Uh, you'll find ones that are old and still running on the .NET framework rather than .NET, um, and not, not all of them uh, run the same way. Uh, a lot of them. Uh, if you don't want to install a specific framework, what if you have .NET, but you don't have .NET Framework, then you wouldn't even be able to play it. Um, and so that's why I wanted to definitely include the, the online versions of the games as well. So you can play it even on uh, mobile if you want to. Um, there are currently, uh, oh, uh, before I jump on to my next topic, I do want to mention that I am trying to build a community around this project. Uh, if anyone's interested in uh, contributing, uh, it's definitely welcome. Um, I do want to mention that I did uh, just recently submit this to the .NET Foundation. I don't know if they'll take it since it's not a library. It's kind of a just a resource. Uh, I won't talk too much about that, but um, it's, it is possible that the URL up here of the project may change in the future. I just want to mention that. Um, so, uh, there's currently 43 games. Um, I coded 39 of them. Um, and to that point, I, I want to mention a couple in particular, because we've had uh, several community contributions, uh, meaning they were built by other people and contributed. Uh, we have checkers that was contributed. Um, and if you click on the community contribution, it will show you who contributed. So this was Wycott. Um, and uh, Duck Hunt was contributed by Corey Hindeman. Um, and uh, if I scroll up here, uh, Dice Game was contributed by <laughs> Javi the Great 35. Uh, and then this final one down here, I want to mention uh, Console Monsters has been a community, I, I call it a community collaboration um, because it's, uh, it, multiple developers have come together and were working on this project actively. Um, so th this is a game that's still that we're still actively working on. But uh, I did just want to give a, a special shout out to the people who have contributed games so far. Uh, thanks for everyone. Uh, thanks for the contributions, everyone. Um, so uh, I mentioned console monsters. Let's let's uh, go ahead and give that one a look. Um, I'll just run it from Visual Studio. And I'm still not sure why I'm getting that error, but it looks like if I build first, it's good to go. Okay, so uh, the game is running. Now, uh, I do want to mention that if I size it up a little bit, it should. Where's my where's my sizer on my? There we go. Uh, so there is a dynamic uh, rendering when we increase the screen size. Uh, you'll notice that the menu changed from a smaller uh, font to a larger font. Um, we do have an options menu in this game. Uh, I'm going to disable audio so I'm not, not distracted while, I, while I'm giving the presentation. Um, uh, but here is Console Monsters. Let me jump in here and kind of show you what this one's got. So uh, hopefully it's coming through on the stream uh, pretty well. But uh, we've got a character here. He's walking around. Um, 
and I can come down here and then I can interact with people. There's a dialogue box. Um, and then uh, I we have map transitions. So I'm going to walk up here, go in here. Uh, it, 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 what this game is, it's this game is a, a Pokemon clone. Uh, uh, and I do want to mention again, this is a work in progress. Uh, but yep, so I'll go up here, transition here, walk around. And we just got into a fight. Um, looks like we got a, a Squirtle here. Uh, I won't call it a Squirtle, I'll call it a Turtle. <laughs> but uh, uh, then we got a, a worm of some kind here. Um, and then uh, let's hit another one. Uh, so uh, right now we don't have a battle system built, um, but we, uh, uh, we, we've got random enemies and whatnot. I'll show maybe one more. Uh, so yeah, we and we, we've got about fifty uh, monster sprites. Um, so anyway, that this is a another game that we're working on. Um, now, some of uh, those characters that you just saw, probably uh, you, you might be wondering how we did that in the console. Um, I want to show off a tool real quick uh, on Windows. This is the character map. So if anyone's not familiar with the character map, uh, you can, uh, you can it, it's pre-installed with Windows. Uh, so this is a Windows only tool, um, but I wanted to make a special note of it because this can help you if you, if you want to try to make a console game. Uh, there's a bunch of characters here. So uh, everything that you just saw was uh, character encoding, uh, just characters. Um, uh, and, and we use the character map to kind of help us help us make those those uh, monsters. Uh, and let me just kind of show you a few in the in source code. Um, so there's there's an ant. Let's look at, I guess, an elephant. <laughs> uh, and let's maybe, uh, I, I, I think the cactus is pretty good. Let me go to the cactus. Uh, I was pretty happy with the cactus. Yep, so there's a little cactus. OK, um, let me jump back to my script. Um, I do want to, I'm probably running pretty low on time. I do want to just touch on the website versions of the games. Um, I had mentioned that they were uh, .NET Blazor WebAssembly, um, and they are a project in the source code. So if, it, if you want to see how that works, you can just run the website project, uh, and uh, that's where they are. Um, so if I expand this and let's give it a, a kind of, I'll give you kind of a real brief tour of the, of the source code. Uh, the main thing I want to mention is this Blazor console here. Um, so what I did was uh, I made uh, a class called Blazor console. Um, and this is a simple, this is essentially re-implementing a lot of the functionality of system.console uh, to make it work in uh the Blazor WebAssembly. So if I scroll down a little bit, you'll see window height, window width. Hopefully those are familiar to many of you who have done console work um, or console apps. Set window position, set window size, uh, and then there's a couple extra ones, but you get the idea. I've re-implemented a lot of the functions in, in the system.console. Uh, now let's go look at one of the games uh, real quick. Uh, uh, so here's helicopter, um, and then here's how I'm redirecting the input. So there are, unfortunately, I, I am having to copy the code from the console version to the web version, uh, but this is how I'm redirecting it. Uh, I'm got, I've got a, a property or a, a field in this case um, on a class uh, called console. So anywhere where it sees console in the code, uh, it's calling uh, my console instead of the normal system.console. Uh, you'll also know that there's, uh, you also see a wait uh, next to it. Um, and that's another thing I, I wanted to make a specific point on is uh, if anyone does .NET Blazor uh, WebAssembly right now, uh, you, you might want to know that it is uh, currently single threaded. Uh, I believe there's efforts to add multi-threading, but is currently single threaded. Uh, so uh, I <laughs> I have to do some fun stuff where I uh, where I uh, uh, delay the task uh, in order to 
uh, in order to uh, uh, make sure that the the website can still update its view. Uh, so similar to WinForms where you can't do work on the UI thread, um, this is the same concept here. If I let the game run and I never pass back control to the render thread, it will never update the game. Uh, so this is the solution I came up with and it's, it's working thus far. Um, uh, so uh, that is uh, the majority of the, the content I had uh, in my script <laughs> to cover. Um, uh, I'm going to jump to some uh, questions, if there are any. Uh, sorry, I haven't answered any, looked at any questions yet, but I'm going to switch over in just a minute. Um, uh, if you do have any questions, I'm always on Discord. Um, uh, feel free to ping me or uh, look at the look at the uh, the repository as, as well on GitHub. Um, the uh, sorry, I'm scrolling a little fast here. Uh, I want to get to uh, if you want to get involved and you want to contribute. Um, I, I, you can feel free to just reach out to me, but we're, we're always looking for new games or new game ideas. Uh, so uh, feel free to either put a comment on this issue uh, and or, uh, of course, you're, well, you're welcome to, to open a pull request with a new game as well. Um, uh, but with that said, uh, again, I'm going to move to question and answers, but I want to give a special thanks to the C-Sharp Discord uh, for letting me give this presentation, especially Brainiac for organizing everything. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Um, so I'm going to pull up, uh, pull up question and answers there on my phone. I don't know if there are any, let's find out. Okay. Uh, question, uh, how similar is rendering to the console? Like say, uh, VK image or other rendering pipeline equipment. How um, how do you render to the to the console versus how does rendering to the console compare to other rendering styles? Um, well, all of this is uh, all of this is uh, all, every game that's in the repository currently just pretty much uses the base system.console methods. We're we're not using an engine of any kind. We're not using like this isn't. Uh, for this isn't faked mono game. There's a couple GitHub projects out there that that use mono game for their terminals. Uh, this is not doing that. This is just using the system dot uh, system dot console. Uh, as for how it's rendered, um, usually <laughs> uh, it's very different for each game. Uh, let me go to Solitaire real quick. I think I might be able to explain uh, that one. Or, oh, so. Sorry, Solitaire is the game on my local that I haven't updated yet. Uh, let me just say that I usually have one method that's just render the full screen. I, I shove it all in a string builder, and then I render it to the full screen, uh, dump it once. You don't want to do a bunch of uh, set cursor positions and then write a little bit, set cursor position again, write a little bit. You want, I usually dump it all into, into one string builder and, and render it all at once. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, another question, how is keyboard uh, I.O. on console? As far as I'm aware, most consoles are set up uh, as canonical input uh, return is a pain. Um, uh, so uh, I'm not sure exactly uh, how to answer your question, uh, but uh, norm again, we, we normally just use uh, the 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 functions in system.console. Uh, particularly the ones that I find most, uh, I would I would avoid read line. Um, for all nearly all the games there that have real-time input rather than uh, command input, we're using read key. Um, and I even have a little, uh, a little uh, documents on the readme that I would recommend you looking at, Beginner's Guide to Console Input. I'm going to go ahead and click that, and it takes you here. Um, so uh, let's, uh, example nine is probably a good example. Uh, so we want to uh, we want to wait for a specific key to be pressed. Um, so again, I would recommend you use read key rather than read line, um, and then you can 
get individual key presses. Hopefully that answers your question. Uh, what is the most difficult part of implementing these games? Or what was the most difficult game to implement? Uh, OK, so um, I, I did want to mention, I just realized I forgot from my script, that uh, I wanted to mention how long it took to code each of the games. Uh, now, I can't obviously speak for uh, speak for the ones that were contributed, uh, but for the ones that I coded, which was the majority of them at, at this current time, uh, it, it usually took me around five to 10 hours uh, to code each one. I, I kind of knocked them out. And, and kind of the idea is that I want this to kind of be like a, a console game kata. Uh, so you can, uh, hopefully that makes sense, a, a kata. Uh, uh, katas are puzzles, uh, software puzzles that you need to solve. Uh, and I view these games kind of like that. I'm kind of intending for people to give them a look, code it from scratch so they learn. Um, but uh, uh, as for the hardest one, um, well, uh, Console Monsters, like I said, is a group effort and is definitely the most advanced. Uh, it's actually Console Monsters was largely based off of role playing game. We're adding a lot more than that, but getting the scrolling map size to work uh, was a pain. Um, let me just real quick hop into uh, role playing game just to show you. Uh, how complex this, what, what the most complex thing about it was. And it's being weird again. I'm going to have to build it first. And then run it. Okay, so as you can see, I can move around. And then I'm in a world map. But what I want to mention about this one is, is as I scroll, as I've changed the size of the window, the game does not crash. It uh, it renders dynamically. Um, uh, so uh, it, it adjusts to this, the size of the screen. That was annoying to get just right. Um, so that this was probably one of the, this one probably took a little over 20 hours for me to code. Uh, this was the longest one so far. Um, and I'm not sure how I'm doing on time, but I, I hope we're still okay to answer some more questions. Uh, do you think using console as a render target for the traditional graphics APIs is a way to render 3D graphics quicker, assuming there's a project out there that does something similar? Um, I, I think the best way I can answer your question is you got to keep in mind that these are these are console games. This is not going to make you a AAA game. This is for fun, um, and uh, it's... Uh, I, I just, I view all these console games as kind of a fun little hobby. Uh, uh, and I, I think these make great uh, introductory projects for new developers. That's, that's, the, that's the key. Um, I would rather someone have a fun project for their first project. Uh, uh, I, I think making a, a console game like some of these is a lot more fun than doing the traditional starter projects like making a calculator making uh, a unit converter or making a to-do list app. Um, I just, I, I, I hope, I, I'm sure there's people out there that agree and disagree, but I, I think these are more fun than the standard business apps. Um, and I see that Hunter Scouty is in the chat. Um, I'd like to give a special shout out to him. He's one of the contributors that, that has been working on the console monsters game. Um, so again, thanks to Hunter. Um, we have another question. Have you tried working with MIDI uh, when making these console games? I have not. Um, uh, so, so no. Uh, uh, feel free to uh, shoot me some info on the side if you if you'd like. Um, uh, hey, Brainiac, how are we doing on time? Uh, question: Is there a roadmap on which games uh, we can expect? Uh, oh, uh, so that uh, issue that I showed is uh, where I'm kind of storing some ideas for games I'd like to make. So I've got this little brainstorming section, and I think that these would be good games to make. Um, uh, and uh, uh, I have a couple that I've been working on on the side, so we'll definitely continue to add more in the future. And again, I'm hoping that there will be more community involvement and people will be willing to uh, 
to jump on board and, and also help out. Five minutes left. Have I considered making peer-to-peer -peer online cons uh, CMD games? Yes, and also uh, that's something we want to potentially add into console monsters. So again, console monsters is the the Pokemon clone that I was discussing, um, and it would be cool if we if we get that game. If we, we've got a long ways to go on it, but if we get the battle system worked out and and various things, I, I think it'd be fun to have that one be multiplayer. Um, hopefully that answers your question. Uh, but could you make could you make a peer to peer uh, console game? De definitely for sure. Uh, and yes, uh, I, for anyone that's curious, especially on console monsters, uh, if uh, the latest code is in the console monsters branch, uh, I'll usually try to create a separate branch uh, for different games. Um, uh, so uh, we're, we're on the main branch. Uh, it, it, hopefully that makes sense. We, we usually try to branch off and, and put a different game in each branch. Um, we're probably getting close to time. Uh, is there any questions that I've missed? I know I only showed a handful of the games, but hopefully I enticed you enough to go give some of the other ones a shot. And 43 of them, I knew we weren't going to get all and <laughs> get to all of them. Um, so, okay, let, let's, let's call it quits there. Um, and, uh, uh, again, if you have any more questions, feel free to ping me in the Discord. Um, but, uh, yep, again, special thanks to uh, uh, Brainiac and everyone at C-Sharp Discord for letting me uh, talk. Um, and uh, enjoy the rest. Uh, uh, it looks like I got one more question. <laughs> um, uh, what's your preferred way to recommend beginners uh, store game states across restarts? Uh, um, so... Currently, I don't really have saving because I'm, I'm trying to make all these examples as simple as possible. Um, and most of the games are only a couple hundred lines of code. Um, but yeah, if you want to save your game state, uh, yeah, just do JSON serialization uh, or something like that. I, I would probably recommend JSON serialization. Um, I, I don't think you need to go too much farther than that um, uh, unless you really want to. But yeah, I, I would recommend JSON serial, uh, serialization. Okay. Uh, if there's any other questions, I'll probably be monitoring the chat for the next little bit. Um, but I think we're ready to call it good. Okay. Uh, I'm going to hopefully kill the stream. Uh, sorry, you may get some inception here, but I'm going to leave the studio.